Okay, in this video I'm going to move away from the progressive presses and go on to the single stage press. And I'm going to go over how I make a target round for a long range rifle. This is a Savage Model 10 308. Um, and I'm going to show you how I make a tailor fitted round for this specific rifle. By tailor fitted I mean that by the time I get the round made, if there's another 308 sitting next to it, it's most likely not going to chamber that round. So let's get started. First thing is, um, I'm going to attack this like you have no idea about long range shooting and go over pretty much everything because that way I don't miss anything. So it's, it's a lot of this some of you might already know. But uh, bullet selection is probably the most important for target shooting. You want to look at ballistic coefficients. What, what that is, uh, is the aerodynamics of the bullet. So it's basically more aerodynamic, so that's going to fly you know, further straighter. That's pretty much what that means. Another thing is sectional density. You don't want to use a target bullet for hunting. Um, the reason being, uh, basically the higher bl the ballistic coefficient, usually the higher the sectional density. That's your penetration. So why this is going to be a really accurate long range round, you don't want to necessarily shoot an animal with it because it's going to go right through it. Whereas a hunting bullet tends to be a little shorter and softer, it's going to do more damage. So it's going to hit and stay inside and do as much damage as possible. Where this is just going to punch a clean hole right through a soft target. So that's the difference in the bullets. Um, this is a Hornady AMAX bullet. It's bow-tailed and it's got a polymer tip. The reason for the polymer tip is uh, the lighter the front of the bullet, the, the further and straighter it's going to travel. Instead of it being a hollow point where you're going to get a little bit of uh, you know, air resistance, they basically just filled it in and made it to a polymer point. So you still get the aerodynamics and the lightweight tip. So let's go into cases. I'll try and do this as quick as possible. Um, when you're making a target round, you want to use the same brand cases. Some people even will weigh the same brand cases and segregate them into different piles because even though they're the same brand and from the same run there's going to be little variances in weights I'm talking grains you know not very much but all that affects you know how much air is inside of the case which is going to affect how much pressure it makes so you don't want to mix head stamps basically if you had a Hornady and then a Winchester sitting side by side and you filled them with water and you dumped them out there's going to be different volumes for those cases even though it's the same caliber so you're going to end up with different pressures and that's going to give you different velocities and that's going to affect the whole harmonics and everything else and where you're going to hit another important thing unlike pistol and semi-auto rifles you don't want to full length size your case uh, reason being every time you fire this this case expands a little bit and eventually it gets tight enough to where it starts to contact the walls of the chamber and that's what you want. You want a nice snug fit. You don't want slop inside of there. So we're going to next size it only. Another important thing is your case overall length. Um, inside you've got the, the chamber, the throat, and then the rifling. In between the throat and the rifling there is nothing there. That's where the bullet jumps from the throat to the rifling. And what can happen is the bullet will tilt a little bit or contact the rifling at different spots for different, you know, every time, you know, you shoot a different round, it could touch the rifling and start in at a different spot. The more constant everything is, the better your accuracy is going to be. So if it touches, you know, on this side of the bullet, you might get, you know, a different pressure than the next round where it touches this side first. So you want consistency. That's, that's what you're going for. And the way we're going to do that is, I'll show you, we want to have this touch the lands when it's chambered. And what that does is, now there's no space for this bullet to jump from the throat to the rifling. It's already set into the rifling once the bolt's closed. So it's, it's a straight shot every time down the barrel. It's, there's no movement. So I'll show you how you go about doing that. Um, this is a neck sizing die. It's a Lee uh, neck sizing die. And what I'm going to do is, you can see this, this round's been fired, so the bullet slips in and out real easy. I want to get it to where this bullet's going to stay in here 
and have a little bit of pressure, but I don't want it, you know, to where you have to use a seating die to, to seat the bolt. So I'm just going to slowly work the case until the bullet is tight in it. And like I said, you don't need a lot of uh, resistance. You just want enough to where you can shove the bullet in and it stays. So we're there. The bullet's staying inside. Now this doesn't have a primer in it. There's no powder in this. You don't want to do it with, uh, you know, a case with a primer in it. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to just put it inside the chamber and we're going to close the bolt. You don't need to shove it real hard and fast. You want to go slow and then lock the bolt down on it. And raise it up and lock it down on it again. Okay. Now that's our overall case length. That's for this particular rifle. So there's a good chance every one of these is different. So this probably won't fit in another one because, or it might still be too short depending on the rifle. But for this rifle, this is the case overall length. We're touching the rifling. So now we'll take our micrometer on here and that's going to be our seating depth. And that's how you do that. Another important thing is unlike pistols, trimming your cases and the primer pockets. You want to make sure your primer pockets are cleaned and you want to make sure you trim your cases so they're all the same length. And what I do is after the first time I shoot them, I trim them all down just a little bit short so that way the next time around they usually don't need trimmed. Uh, and that really kind of saves time with the reloading. But uh, that's, you know, th this touching the lands is going to improve your group for sure just right off the bat, just this part. Now, you got a, another thing is the powder. You've, because that's touching lands, you've created more pressure. So now you need to adjust your powder right before you start filling these up. So let's say the max load is 45 grains for this bullet. I'm going to start at 44. Or I, I'm, I'm actually going to start low. You want to start low. Um, so let's say it's 45, I'm going to start at uh, 42, you know, as long as you're not under the minimum load. You want to start at the lowest and work your way up, preferably one grain at a time. And the reason for that is, um, you hear people talk about free-floated barrels and harmonics and things like that. What that basically means is when you fire this rifle, a pressure wave goes down the whole thing and then the barrel. And if you were to watch it in slow motion, you'd see the barrel whips. And by adjusting your powder, what you're doing is, is you're timing the bullet to leave the barrel at the point the gun's zero. So if you've got too much in and the barrel's whipping and the bullet exits while the barrel's whipping up or down, then you're going to be off. So that's where you want to work your load up to. And that's what affects it, the, the, the different velocities, so your different amounts of powder. Basically, you're going to end up with a bullet riding the wave, and that's when you're going to see your group get real tight. You're not going to have two touching in one flyer, or they're all over, and you've got a three-inch group. What you do is you just keep stepping up the powder. I usually do it by one grain at a time, like I'll load ten of each. Step it up at one grain at a time. Once I start getting close, and that group starts getting tight, then I might move to a half a grain or whatever and try and really hone it in. But uh, another thing is when it comes into free floated and bedding, the reason that's important is because if something's touching one side of your barrel, that's going to affect that pressure wave. And there really shouldn't be anything touching your barrel. If The reason being is most of the, the stock polymer stocks, aren't quite right. So if you put pressure on this side, it might touch here for that shot. The next shot, you know, you could be leaning a little bit different or something like that and it touches over here. Well, what that does is that changes that barrel whip every time. So you can't get an accurate shot. You can't get a constant group. Whereas if you look at this stock, this is a free floated barrel. There's nothing touching the barrel. The, uh, the only part that's touching inside of here is the action. It's mounted on aluminum bedding blocks that are cast into this polymer stock. So there is no movement. And that's what you want. You don't want something touching one side of the barrel like 
especially if you know if if you mount something like a, a bipod and you don't have a sturdy enough stock you know what's what's happening is is you're pushing up on that barrel a little bit probably and another thing is even with a bipod like if you're shooting on a hard surface you should have some kind of padding under it I have a little rubber mat that I put under under it to take some of that bounce out because you, you everything matters when you're really going for long range shooting um, all that stuff you have to factor in so that's pretty much how you go about making a custom tailored round like I said it will not work in semi-automatic firearms so if you try to do this for like an AR or something like that you're gonna have problems with it loading the round uh, and that's pretty much it so that should improve your accuracy and hopefully this video kinda helped out